Los Angeles turns out in force to scream a welcome to two of the war's outstanding heroes, General Blood and Guts Patton and General Jimmy Doolittle. Along the route, nearly two million people turn out to acclaim the man who beat the Germans at their own game of mechanized warfare. <laughs> ...are given prominent display for Doolittle as well as G.I. Joe needs your help. General Doolittle, Tokyo bound again, has the right slant when he says, I'd like to form a team now, the home team and the field team, and to say that if you will furnish us the supplies, if you will furnish the ships, if you will deliver the supplies, we, the field team, will see that they're properly used and bring this war to a prompt conclusion. Thank you. James Jimmy Doolittle, 1896-1993. For conspicuous leadership above and beyond the call of duty involving personal valor and intrepidity and an extreme hazard to life. Citation for the Medal of Honor, Jimmy Doolittle. Soldier, scientist, Medal of Honor winner and executive, in a career spanning from the First World War until the dawn of the Space Age, Legendary aviator Jimmy Doolittle's achievements place him in the pantheon of American heroes. His list of accomplishments would fill volumes, from flight instructor during the First World War to the first doctorate in aeronautical engineering. Throughout the 20s and 30s, Doolittle performed pioneering work on aircraft navigation and instrumentation while compiling a staggering list of competitive aviation awards. April 18, 1942, in the aftermath of Pearl Harbor, Lieutenant Colonel Doolittle led 16 Army Air Force B-25 Mitchell medium bombers from the pitching deck of the aircraft carrier Hornet in an attack on military targets in five Japanese cities. The Doolittle Raiders returned home heroes. Lieutenant Colonel Doolittle received promotion to Brigadier General and the Medal of Honor. General Doolittle continued to fly combat missions as the commander of the 12th Air Force in North Africa, the 15th Air Force in the Mediterranean, and as the commander of the 8th Air Force in England from January 1944 until the end of World War II. In 1946, Lieutenant General Doolittle returned to the inactive reserve and took up his duties as a vice president of Shell Oil Company. Ever a leader, during the 1950s, he became the first president of the Air Force Association and helped to found the space program by serving in two key positions, as a special assistant in scientific matters to the chief of staff of the Air Force and as the chairman of the board of TRW Space Technology Laboratories. Lieutenant General Doolittle retired from the Air Force on February 28, 1959. On April 4, 1985, Congress promoted Lieutenant General Doolittle to the rank of full general in recognition of a lifetime of service to his country. James H. Jimmy Doolittle died on September 27, 1993, at the age of 96, and was buried with full military honors at Arlington National Cemetery. Each September, all eyes turn toward Cleveland and the national air races. My old high school chum, Cliff Henderson, was the organizer and manager of these races. Here's Cliff with the Lindberghs at the 1929 event. That year, Slim put on a show with the Hi-Hats, a U.S. Navy demonstration team. He's the one in the middle. By 1932, the national air races had become one of the nation's leading sporting events. The crowds were enormous. Spectators always enjoyed acrobatics and wing walking. But what they really came to see were the races, particularly the Thompson Trophy Classic. About watching a real show today, starting with Jimmy Doolittle, the human bullet. I won that one in 1932, averaging over 250 miles per hour in the GDR one. It 
was the most unforgiving airplane I ever flew. You had to fly it all the time. You didn't dare make tight turns. Slow, Jimmy. You did a real job. We look back at the 20s and 30s as the golden age of aviation. We've watched sick and wire box kites give way to sleek, powerful aircraft capable of crossing oceans, circling the globe, and opening unexplored territory. War clouds would soon obscure the traces of air show smoke lingering in the sky. But nothing can erase the memory of the men and women with whom I flew during those golden years between the wars. Here's to them all.